Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brain Blue Site YouTube channel. Time for another Palace preview. Of course, the early kickoff tomorrow, Palace are playing Fulham at Sellers Park off the back of the best result of the season for, for me, the biggest result. And a result that really does mean we can look up the table rather than hovering with our eyes, you know, glancing below us. I think it's a really, it was just such a massive, massive result. And then the fact that it was against Brighton kind of put the emphasis on it 10 times, 10 times over, you know, it was massive, massive game. And although we didn't play very well, and as I said on another day, if, well, if we didn't get that winning goal, I would have been very, very unhappy with the performance. Um, the fact is we did get the winning goal. We did win the game. And for me, it doesn't matter. That's always been my one thing that I've, um, I've um, disagreed with in terms of Roy Ball and people who criticise the way Roy sets up the team is, um, well, if we win playing that way, then that's, to, to me, that's entertaining. Seeing my, seeing Palace win a football match, you know, I don't have any criticisms with how it gets there. It's not like we are a team that has to play a certain way, like you'd expect a City or a Liverpool or an Arsenal, for example. They've got a philosophy. They will never play another sort of philosophy. Um, you won't see them play a, a, a Sean Dyche style, you know, sitting deep, counter-attacking style of football. Um or I should say, you know, parking the bus style of football for 90 minutes. You're going to expect them to play a much more fluid, um, more exciting brand of football. Um, we, we don't have that, you know, right or we don't have that. I think uh, I don't think we're a team that demands that. We we just play the, the best way we can to get a win. And if it is play, playing that way and we do get wins on the board, then so be it. The, the problem comes when you don't win and you don't see a plan B or changes. That's when it's frustrating. But... To get a win the way we did, it was just so sweet. It was just it was just the best way to beat Brighton, in my opinion, was to soak up that pressure, apart from obviously battering them like a 5-0. It was to soak up that pressure and to just um, show them that, yeah, you can have all this possession, all these touches in the opposition box, but at the end of the day, you've got to finish... Got to finish if you're going to uh, if you're going to stay in this league, and their you know their position in the Premier League is very much in doubt now because of that. So, off the back of that massive result, it's now a chance, as I already said, to look up the table rather than below us. And a win potentially, it's unlikely, but with the, the fixtures that are coming up coming up at the weekend, but potentially could see us going to the top ten if we beat Fulham um, by a comfortable margin. Um, and. It's a really interesting game because I really want to see how he approach this. Fulham are on fantastic form and they are they have a chance if they beat us to move out of the bottom three for the first time this season, I think. I think they've been in the bottom three the whole season. Um, and if Newcastle lose, they win. I think they go above Newcastle. So massive chance for them and there's going to be a massive incentive there. They're on a great run of form as well. Off the back of that win as well against Sheffield United, it is a really, really big game for them. So I'm, I'm expecting it to be ch much... Tougher than the reverse fixture, we we really were comfortable in that um, in that two one win away to Fulham. We were two 0 up, and it was obviously a last minute goal. There was a consolation goal for them, but um, it was very comfortable for us. Jairo Riedewald ran the show from midfield to Haran, and, and um, well, to Haran was uh, brilliant. Probably one of his best performances of the season in that game as well. All in all, very good performance. I don't think it'll be the same Fulham we see at Sellers Park. It's going to be a much trickier game, I think. The main thing I want to see is how we re we play, how we go into this game off the back of that massive result against Brighton. The players were buzzing, the interviews and all of the images after were, you know, they were ecstatic. Roy was buzzing as well. It, it was just a massive, I think everyone kind of peaked at that moment and were all working hard in the week to get to that stage where we could win away at Brighton. We got the win. Now, what do we do? Do we go back into what I saw last year? We all saw at the end of last season and we slumped back into uh, not really caring you know, on the beach mode kind of performances where we see the team not really care and just kind of have a look forward to, you know, getting us, most of them signing a new contract or, you know, going to, going on the beach, as I've said already, you know, is this the season done for them now? Was that Brighton result and pretty much confirming our safety with that win the end of the line for, for them, this for a lot of players this season? Or are they going to actually have a um, the motivation and the desire and the will to see how far they can go up the table and see how high they can finish this season and try and push into the top 10. Personally, I really hope it's the latter. Nothing will frustrate me more than seeing what I saw at the end of last season where the players just gave up on the season and said, we're safe. There's nothing really to play for here. We're going to bin off the rest of these games and not really give it a go and see how high we can finish. And that was so frustrating last season. Um, if And it's going to be, as I said, so interesting to see if the players take 
that same approach going into this, starting with this Fulham game and, and get rolled over by Fulham because it's potentially a, a game where we could get rolled over and dominated in the midfield area, especially if we're not careful. Um, or is it going to be a game where we actually look at it and think, yeah, fantastic win against Brighton. Can we now kick on and get a good run of form going into the end of the season and see if we can finish in that top 10, which is still very, very gettable for me. Looking at Fulham as well, Loftus-Cheek will probably be coming back to sell us to play against us. And it's still a player who I thought we could have got in the summer, not on a permanent, but maybe a loan. Um, of course, in the end, we ended up getting back Shawai, so we couldn't loan two players from the same club, unfortunately. But I think that Ruben Loftus-Cheek is such a class act, one of my favourite players to watch since we got pr promoted. And, you know, that's a big, that's a big thing, to, a big statement, because we had some very exciting players uh, in that time on some club legends, of course, as well. And he's right up there at the top of just for that one season alone, the way he played. He's just he's so good with the ball at his feet, driving runs from midfield. And that's something we've got to watch because Luca, I see it so often with Luca. He worries me the way he will stand square on and like come out to a player in the middle of the pitch, stand square on facing him and get done and try and either just stand there and let him go past or pull him or and not be, you know, he should be side on jockeying and then trying to and anticipating that movement in behind him. And for me, I think he just, when he stands there, jumps square on and then gets beaten easily, he's out the game and it's a player gone from the midfield and it's just Gyro trying to sweep up behind him. He does cop out of those sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one challenges are too much for me at the moment, Luca. He needs, he needs to sort that out. And with Loftus-Cheek driving from midfield, that's going to be a massive problem for us. If Luca keeps on getting caught out in the middle of the pitch, challenging players that he shouldn't be challenging he really should just be sitting in or jockeying and not going on these one-on-one -on -one areas and just going square on rather than side on and you know taking himself out the game effectively and that's what's frustrating for me with Luca at the moment I would need him to as captain he really should be doing better in that scenario as well and reading the game a lot better I think that the back four has to be the same in this off the back of that the amazing defensive display we saw from the from that back four all of them putting their bodies on the line. Fantastic challenges and interceptions. And uh, they're the reason we got the result in the end. Um, obviously, the massive credit to the forwards for getting the being clinical when the chances came to them. But the defence really, and led by Gary Cahill, we, he looked back to his best from last season as well against Brian. And that was great to see. Um, for me, Mateta as well. It'll be interesting to see how he plays because he has to start for the rest of the season for me. Uh, first goal for the club. Let's see how he can kick on now. And I do think Roy will start him uh, for the foreseeable future, at least, because he said it himself, you know, it's a chance for him to impress against Brighton, and he, he sure, and he sure as hell did. So he has to start. And obviously, as I said, the main player that I'm worried about is Loftus Cheek for Fulham, because we all know how good he is and what he can bring to a, to a side, especially a side struggling. Um, but Josh Madger as well, a player, of course, we were linked with before he ended up going to Bordeaux in, in, in France. Uh, whilst he was still at Sunderland, Roy didn't really know who he was at the time, which is a bit embarrassing. Um, and look, now he's got his Premier League move from Bordeaux, uh, scored a cup of brace on his debut. Looks very exciting. It looks like a handful. He looks like a player who's hungry and wants to prove something to Scott Parker and the and the and the board at Fulham to make them, you know, to say thank you to them for signing him and show him that he's the right man for the job. And this is the sort of game where they'll be leaning on him quite heavily to. You know, get the goals is a game in where where they will be targeting this as a win. Um, and as I said, it's a lot of players that I think look up for the fight, the relegation battle now. Whilst at the start of the season they were leaking goals left, right, centre, didn't look like they had any fight about them. That's not you know you can't say that about Fulham now. They look like they got a lot of fight, a lot of hunger, desire. Uh, at the back, Ariola, of course, is a good keeper. He's had a few mistakes this season, and but most of the goals conceded weren't his. Haven't been his fault in my opinion. Um, and they're, they're slowly fixing that problem at the back whilst getting goals. And that's a good recipe to have. So, as I said, it's going to be a tough game. It's all going to be about who's clinical. If we can be anywhere near as clinical as we were against Brighton, we'll be fine. But all in all, really hope it's the same team that goes out. I, obviously, I think Zahar will, 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 won't be fit, won't be ready for this one. He will sure as hell be ready for the next game, but I don't think he's quite ready for Fulham. Um, so I would just go with the same team, to be honest. And hopefully Eze gets more of the ball in the middle of the pitch as well, because he was a bit quiet against Brighton. I think he was lost out wide. He didn't really have anything to do. He didn't get on the ball enough. Um, and that's just one problem with playing out wide all the time, is that he isn't really involved enough in the game. And when Will's not playing, you really need, we really need Eze to be the focal point as well. So a lot of things to look at. I'm really excited for this game. No pressure on the team. But what sort of Palace team, what sort of performance, I should say, will the players give? Uh, the fact there's not much pressure on them and all the pressure is more on Fulham for this game. 
Are they going to be on the beach or are they going to focus on trying to get into the top 10? That's all I want to see from the boys. What sort of fight are they going to show? Like, share, subscribe, guys. Put your team uh, predictions down below. I think it'll be the same 11 that played against Brighton. I hope it is anyway. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe and come on the Palace. Let's try and get into that top 10.